In today's video, I want to show you how you can use this freely available AI tool to optimize your company's finances. It does not have to be a big publicly traded company. It could be a small restaurant, a cafe, or your stock portfolio. Basically, using this AI tool called as Solver, you can know the best possible way to optimize your company's growth. You basically tell this tool your situation and your constraints or restriction, and Solver will give you the best possible outcome for that situation. The trick is to know how to set up your worksheet to be able to use this tool. And I'll show you exactly how if you stick with me until the end of this video. So let's get right into it. So what you see on my screen is a simplified version of a company's income statement. Gross revenue is how much a company earned during a period. And as you can see, company earned the income with sales and advertising. Cost of goods sold is what company had to spend to generate the revenue. We can see that company had to spend money on labor, material, and miscellaneous expenses to generate the revenue. What we intend to do is basically optimize this number in cell E14, which is basically a formula of gross revenue minus cost of goods sold for that quarter. Also, the numbers under Feb and March are basically the numbers calculated from the month of Jan. We are basically forecasting them in short. And what you see in cell B4 and C4 is the percentage growth for the next month. So for Jan to Feb, we believe that the company will grow by 1%. But from Feb to March, for certain reasons, we think that there will be decline, which is indicated by 0.9%. Then you can see the constraints on the screen here, which we will basically use to tell the model by how much realistically we can increase the income and how much realistically we can decrease the expenses so it can maximize our gross profit for the quarter in the cell of E14, to $285,000. Now, to activate Solver, you need to first make sure that this feature is added into your Excel capability. If you go to the Data tab, if your version of Excel has already added this feature in, you will see the word Solver in the Analysis group. If you're not seeing this group or you're not seeing this Solver, you will need to take the following steps. It only takes a few seconds and you only need to do this once. Go to the File tab in Ribbon. Choose Options. And in the list of choices here in the Excel options dialog box, down the left hand side, choose add-ins. And then in the list of add-ins, choose solver add-in. And then at the bottom of the screen here, manage Excel add-ins, click go. And here we see a list of add-ins. Solver on my screen is already checked since I already have it installed. In your case, if it's not there, you will want to check the box for solver and then click OK. And within few seconds, you will have activated the add-in. And then on the data tab, you will see Solver. Now, let's go to the feature called Solver on the data tab in the analysis group. Here's the Solver dialog box. Set objective. We want to change the cell E14. Click or type E14. Set our objective to the value of $285,000 by changing which cells. Now, we could change the sales entry for January, the advertising entry the labor, the material, or the miscellaneous expenses. Maybe all of them. Let's just change a few of them. I'm dragging across cells B5 and B6. I'm also going to select B10. Now we want to allow these cells to change, but we do want to be realistic about it. So let's choose add. This means add constraints. The first constraint is that we want this cell B5, let's click on it, to be less than or equal to a certain amount. And I consulted with my sales team, they think $145,000 revenue for January sales is a realistic number. Now that might not be enough, we don't know that yet. Let's add another constraint. Let's allow our income from advertising, that's in B6, to grow a bit, but certainly not more than $35,000. And again, being somewhat optimistic. This time, let's focus on labels, the cost of goods in B10. This time, we want to allow that value to drop but not too much. But we want to reverse the arrow here to say that it must be greater than or equal to 75,000. That's all the constraint we want. We will click OK. Here, we see the three constraints listed. Two of those can grow, but within certain limits. One can shrink, but within a certain limit. We want this cell E14 to be equal to 285,000. Let's click Solve, and we get a pop-up box. There certainly will be times where a message will say, Solver did not find the solution. And sometimes you will see a number in the appropriate cell that's very close. In this example here, we've got a new number for sales. It's 143,000. 
a new number for advertising and a new number for cost of goods sold and we have got a total here so we have got a couple of options we could restore the original values we could keep these and return to the solver parameters dialog box if you're working with this and you decide to go back to the original values if you do want to experiment you might want to make a copy of this worksheet before going here but if you're fairly confident about what this feature can do or you've been told that it's a good one you might just want to click ok possibly keeping the results here what i'm going to do for the moment is restore the original values and return to the solver parameters dialog box by clicking ok so our numbers are back to what they were what i didn't point out earlier and something you might want to look into and this may involve some knowledge about solver that i'm not familiar with right now this is a very sophisticated feature which we didn't talk about is the solving method you might not be familiar with the terms grg nonlinear simplex lp each of these has a description here and possibly as you would make these choices you might also want to explore options and if you want more advice you can go to the site at solver.com you'll get more information on this this is a classic excel add-in and it has been in excel for many number of years but this website gives you a lot detail on how to make this work most efficiently. I think you can see from here in this example that this is a sophisticated tool that allows you to do a considerable amount of financial analysis on your own.